Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we are going to study the AIMS test. AIMS test is a major part of a syllabus in general toxicity in the subject of pharmacological and toxicological screening methods too. So AIMS test is basically used to uh, detect the carcinogenicity or mutagenicity of a certain chemical compound. And it is widely used nowadays. <clears throat> So there is introduction of uh, AIMS test. So uh, it is a it is a one of the biological assay which will assess the mutagenic potential of a chemical compound. We basically utilize a bacteria to test to check whether a given chemical can cause mutation in the DNA of that given organism. So what is mutation? What we are exactly called the mutation? So mutation is basically the change in structure of a gene which will leads to its variant variant form, and that can be that variant form can be transmitted to the subsequent generation, like one generation generation to the next generation. And any agent that can cause mutation are hereby called as mutagens. So there are many types of uh, mutagens, such as chemical mutagens, physical mutagens, and also biological mutagens. Chemical mutagens, uh, we, can, uh, we can give examples such as 1,4-dichlorobenzene, 2-aminofluoril. In physical agents, we can uh, give examples like sun rays, microwaves, and x-rays. Whereas in biological agents, the uh, agents which, which can cause mutations are exampled as uh, transposons and viruses. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, AIMS test is basically used to estimate the carcino carcinogenicity potential of a compound to be tested. Uh, there are many standard carcinogenic assays on mice and rats are available, but they are time consuming as it takes a live model to the test. It takes around two to three years for a chemi for a single chemical to be tested. And also it is very expensive. And also it can give some false positive or false negative responses. But uh, when we use AIM test, AIM test serves as a quick and convenient essay as it takes hardly two to three days for a single test. And also it does not use live model. So it is, uh, it is inexpensive also. So here are the objectives of the AIM test. It is basically used to uh, determine the mutagenic activity of a chemicals by observing whether they can cause a mutation in a sample bacteria or not. We will basically observe the uh, mutation that the certain chemical will cause in the bacteria. So uh, one of the most important thing about the AIMS test is that it will involve the uh, mixing of test compound with the rat liver enzyme. Now, what is the role of rat liver enzymes here? So many chemicals that are available are not directly mutagenic, but are mut uh, but but when they metabolized by liver enzymes, they can cause uh, they can cause uh, mutagenic forms. So uh, we basically add uh, the li rat liver enzyme in the start of uh, experiment uh, to uh, to mimic the liver metabolism of the body, so that we can uh, we can detect correctly the mutagenic capacity of a compound. So here is the principle of the uh, principle of the AIMS test. So uh, AIMS test is based on the principle of reverse mutation or back mutation. So the test is also called as bacterial reverse mutation assay. In other words, the mutation uh, reverse mutation can be uh, defined as the mutation that changes the mut mutant into wild type allele or phenotype. Thus, the reverse mutation converts the aberrant state of gene back to the normal. It will uh, also it can change it to the wild type wild type state wild type state. So here we use the test organism like several strains of S. typhirium or tryptophan. S. typhirium we basically use for the histidine and tryptophan we used uh, E. coli we used for the tryptophan. Uh, after that, after that, uh, what we will do? We will make a point mutation. Point mutation. So basically, what is po point mutation? A point mut mutation can be a uh, explained as a mutation that will only affect to the few nucleotides in the gene sequence. So we will make a certain points in the gene and we will only mutate those points. So we will make the mutation on histidine, on S. typhi or tryptophan on E. coli, operon, so that this mutation will, will uh, subsequently result in histidine negative and tryptophan negative organism and that will make the bacteria incapable of producing the corresponding amino acids and the organism that can't grow, and that a specific organism will uh, unable to grow in the absence of histidine or tryptophan 
बट वेन वी विल कल्चर दिस हिस्ट्री निगेटिव सैलमोनेला इन द मीडिया विच विल कंटेन अ सर्टन केमिकल्स विच मे और मे ना मे नॉट हैव द कैपेसिटी ऑफ म्यूटेशन दे विल कॉज द म्यूटेशन इन हिस्ट्रीन इनकोडिंग जीन एंड आफ्टर म्यूटेशन द द बैक्टेरिया विल गेन द एबिलिटी to synthesize histidine and which convert histidine negative to hist to histidine positive and this reverted bacteria will then grow in histidine or tryptophan deficient media also so now in the picture we can see that there are some colonies uh, these colonies are formed in the plate which will indicate that that the substance is being tested has mutagenic or carcinogenic properties so here is the procedure of uh, the end stage so we will isolate the oxytropic strain of a typhirium for histidine amino acid oxytropy basically means the in inability of organism to synthesize a particular organic compound required which is uh, mainly required for its growth so we will isolate this strain of uh, a typhi for histidine so uh, uh, we will then make the test suspension of histidine negative a typhirium in the plain buffer and we will also add the test chemical as we have to test the uh test the test chemical in this and also we will add a small amount of histidine now small amount of histidine is required uh, for bacteria to at least start growing and once the added histidine histidine will deplete only those bacteria which are which are mutated to gain the ability to synthesize histidine will form the colonies and after that we will also make the control uh we will also make the control suspension to just compare the ability of uh, test chemical to grow the colonies so uh, in control suspension we we won't add the test chemical other other things will be all the same so next we will uh, um incubate both the suspension at 37 degrees celsius for 20 minutes and after incubation of 20 minutes we will again prepare two agar plates and we will uh, spread the suspension on the agar plate both the suspension and after that we will uh, incubate the both petri plate uh, at 37 degrees celsius and now for 48 hours and after 48 hours of incubation we will count the uh, number of colonies in each plate and we will compare that so this is the procedure in diagrammatical form so this is the strain of s typhirium which is uh, we uh, get the histidine negative strain uh, then we will add that with the rat liver enzyme rat liver extract and uh, in that in the suspension we will add the possible mutagen the test chemical basically this was the test uh, suspension and for the control we won't add the possible mutagen and uh, other things will be same then we will incubate the both uh, petri plates for 48 hours as we uh, discussed earlier and after 48 hours we will observe the number of colonies in the plate so first diagram indicates that if there is high number of uh, reverted high number of colonies we will uh, we will detect from that, that that the test chemical has the mutagenic possible uh, capacity and thus can grow the colonies even without the histidine or tryptophan and in this control plate small amount of growth can be seen due to a uh, small uh, small point mutation or revert, mu reverse mutation which will cause in histidine encoding gene so this is the uh, result interpretation so the 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 mutagenicity of the <clears throat> the mutagenicity of a chemical will be directly proportional to the colonies observed more the potent mutant will be more colonies will be formed uh, if the number of colonies on the test plate are more than more than that the colonies in the control plate the chemical is uh, definitely a mutagen and as we discuss very small amount of a uh, number of colonies can be seen on the control plate also this may be due to spontaneous point mutation uh, in the histidine encoding gene so these are the uses of the uh, aims test uh, we can detect uh, there are possible there may be a possible mutation in the strain uh, different strain of bacteria also so we can detect in the same way as we detected the ke uh, test chemicals and also it is a less expensive technique and takes very less time and very easy to understand we can uh, check the mutagenicity of many environmental samples such as drugs dyes reagents wastewater pesticides and all the substances but but the substances should be soluble in the liquid suspension as we are uh, incubating the liquid suspension the substances should be soluble in the liquid suspension 
So here are some merits and limitations of the AIMS test. Uh, as we uh, discussed earlier, the AIMS test is simple, rapid, rapid, rapid and robust bacterial assay. Uh, its low cost makes it, it invaluable for screening substances in, in environment. As, you, as it does not use the live model, it is very less in cost. Thus, we can check many, uh, many substances in the environment also. And also, it can detect the uh, bacteria in the large popula population also because it has a high sensitivity. Now, the limitations are... Uh, the some substances can cause the uh, cancer in laboratory animals such as decoxin. So it won't give a proper positive AIMS test. As the decoxin is causing cancer in laboratory on animal, it is not necessary that decoxin will uh, cause a uh, cancer in us also in humans, right? So it won't give a positive AIMS test or it won't be 100% correct. And also, we use the uh, ACE type strains for the uh, for this SM, which is not a perfect model for humans. So we can't exactly detect which agent can cause mutagenicity in bacteria and which agents can cause mutagenicity in human body. Here are some applications of the AIMS test. So first is first is assessment of mutagenic potential. So as we discussed, uh, it can. Uh, it can check the mutagenic potential of, of chemicals that are available that we may be used as drugs or uh, different biological agents. Next, it is used, used in drug discovery and development. Uh, the chance of developing cancer can be raised uh, by mutagenic, uh, mutagenic drugs. Like if there is a, a disease called cancer, if the drug is itself a mutagenic, it can, it can raise the chances of uh, cancer. Uh, so prior to testing, uh, of that came of that drugs either on animals or people the test can aid in the early identification of possible mutagen in the given medicine we can use also used in the food safety we use uh, day to day we use uh, many preservatives and coloring agents in our day-to-day -day life but we don't know the actual ca carcinogenic or mutagenic capacity of the given preservative or different coloring agents so with aims test we can check the carcinogenicity or mutagenicity of different uh, substances that we add in our food. Environmental monitoring. Now, we uh, we came across many pollutants like water pollutants, air pollutants, uh, and many of them can cause cancer in human body. So, for that, it is easy to uh, access the carcinogenicity of the different pollutants in the environment. And in regulation, it assesses the safety of chemicals uh, uh, basically, the regulatory organizations like U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, which is also called as EPA, is frequently employing the AIMS test, and the AIMS test finding can be used to assess the hazards that chemicals may pose and to establish standards for their usage. So, it is also used in the regulation of the chemical compound. Thank you. This was from my side for the AIMS test. I hope you learned uh, every aspect of the AIMS test. If you have any query or any doubt or any question, please uh, drop in the comment section. I will surely uh, try to answer that. Thank you so much.